and I want you to talk about how to walk in the supernatural, in harmony with the Holy Spirit in the days ahead, in the days ahead. So that's what I'm going to do tonight. Okay, see, these are the two things that I need to talk to you about. You need, you need to pray out if you, what you're supposed to do for someone else in this season and share the love of God with somebody. I, I don't care if it's, if you just crochet. I don't care what it is. Draw a picture. It's what the kids do with, they give me pictures. You know, they, they use crayons. And I sit there and cry and, and, and pray over them at home. That's their gift to me. But you got to do something for someone. The, the second thing is, is that you have to let the Lord talk to you, even if it's rough. Because he wants to help us navigate through the days ahead. But the days ahead, the navigation from now on, has got to be supernatural. It will not be natural, even though you're still going to brush your teeth, and you're going to behave, and you're going to eat, and you're going to go to work, and you're going to... You know, you're going to do all those things that you do. But supernaturally is how God is going to act in your life. It's going to be above natural because the needs are different. Everything now has to be a miracle. But see, no one's saying that. But see, from now on, your finances, your relationships, everything about you has got to be supernatural. It's got to be above natural. You're not going to be able to jimmy it anymore. You're running out of ways to, f to make your bank account look bigger than it is. You're running out of ways to figure out like, well, it used, this used to work. And then, and then you do that again and it doesn't work. Jesus spit on people to get them healed. And that wouldn't go well in most churches today. I mean, if I go and I spit on somebody, I, I, trust me, I'm not coming back. I'm not going to be invited back, you know. But Jesus did these kind of things, but he didn't always do them. Okay? All right, so I needed to share those things with you because from now on, you got to be above board. And this is what Jesus told me. I mean, is everybody looking at me? He went like this. He said, I have set excellence at Warrior Notes at this level. He said, don't back off of that mark. He said, don't back off because um, you, you want to please people. Because I started to feel pressure. I started to hear snide comments. And I, start, I started to think, it's like, well, then you start your own YouTube channel and you start your own ministry right now. Amen. And you, you can say whatever you want. Right. But see, I'm just telling you, when I get in a pulpit, I'm not going to talk about myself. I'm not going to talk about my house, my airplane. I'm not going to swear like ministers are swearing from the pulpit now. Oh, yeah, my friends. My friends are threatening to shoot people that are talking about them. So I'm not going to waste the time we have here on those kind of things. I'm going to talk you up into the supernatural because that's what you need. You need, you need to go beyond and get up to the level that Jesus achieved for you through the cross. So he came down, but he, he did go up and he grabbed you by the scuff of the neck and took you with him. Yeah. Screaming. So whether you believe or not believe doesn't change God's attitude toward what he did through Jesus Christ. He already set a high bar, which is hot, not lukewarm, not cold. It's hot. So we can't waste our time saying things and doing things that, that have been like the past. The past, it seemed to work because the economy was doing well. But see, what happens if you have to live in your car? You know that nice car you drive. In other words, some of you are going to start to see that certain things don't work anymore, and you might have to get spit and mud and put it in your eyes to see. If you all don't get what I'm saying, I'll say it again. 
Jesus didn't always do the same thing every time. He did heal people. I had so many supernatural things happen at, when I would fast. So I just kept going until I could see if I could get up to a whole month of fasting, you know. And I want to be like Moses and do 40 days. But then I didn't look like Moses anymore because I started losing my hair, and he had a lot more hair than me, so I'm thinking there's something wrong here. <laughs> so at a certain point, the Holy Spirit said to me, stop fasting, stop praying, go out and play tennis. And you know what happened? I got so in the Spirit, and all these things happened, and it became so predictable that I started to get weird. No, I started to get weird because I was like tethered out there in space and my body and my mind didn't have any input and I needed, I needed to be a human being and it got to where that disconnect, either I gotta go to heaven or I'm gonna be weird down here. He said, you prayed yourself into the next seven years. Go play tennis. And I'm thinking, God's not very spiritual right now. Are you having a, you know, I, 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 thought, I thought that. Now, listen to what I'm trying to tell you is, is that God has already started to instruct all of us to do things that are not common. It's, it's going to be a, an, a supernatural approach to everything. Because... Honestly, the process that we've gone through right now is that he is allowing us to run out of options in the natural so that we turn to him and ask him for help. And, and it's going to be supernatural intervention. So I'm trying to cut it short on the process so that I can just tell you where, where we're going. We can cut the test short. And you can just spout out off the right answers and God's going to stop it and say, well, congratulations, you passed and we're going to go on. You don't have to pray. Go play tennis. See, but you go, you go and you play tennis. All we did was buy 10 people turkey dinners. And the money that we really needed came. But we didn't do it for money. It was a supernatural event. God will do it in a supernatural way after you have done what you're supposed to do. Okay, well, I'm excited anyway. Okay. All right, so when he appeared to me in this dream, he didn't speak all the names of the people you'd think. He said, I put your, my foot down, you put your foot down, or you'll be held accountable on the day of judgment. And what he's done is he's saying, listen, what was achieved through Jesus Christ was way more and much higher than what we're aiming for and what we're, de we're, we're we have to place a demand on the inheritance because it's already been given see we've already have the inheritance in the covenant we need to not lower the standards so what so what what's the tipping point the tipping point is when each one of us individually gets to a place where we opt out of works Now, now, what I mean is, is, is if you feel like you're doing something out of coercion, if you're doing it because you think that God would be upset if you, with you if you don't, then I would, suggest, I would suggest you nail that devil on the head. Say, well, you know what? I'm not, I'm not going I'm to do that. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something else. I'm going to have a prayer walk. Now, I prayed in tongues the whole way over here at 600 miles an hour. I wasn't waiting for, like, the prayer room with the right music and, you know, you know my special candle, you know, the one that's really anointed. I'm telling you what God's doing right now. There have been people that for 20 and 30 years, they have been doing th stuff in secret, and it's being revealed right now. They've been doing th things that are, that are, 
that are, were hidden and now they're revealed. Well, it's just, it's just starting because the body of Christ needs to be dressed and ready for Jesus to come back. So, of course, it's going to start with the house of God. But in order to dress the bride right, it ha there has to be a, an exposure and a, and a cleansing and a redressing, a dressing. And there has to be this whole process. It's like a year of, of getting ready for the bridegroom. And he can come at any time during that year, according to the Jewish tradition. And so we're supposed to just be ready you know, with everything at any time, the oil and the lamps and things like that. And so this is what I, I, I don't want you to be holding on to something that God is telling you that needs to go to someone else. I don't want you to hold back on something. And then the next day you're in heaven, but you didn't see it coming. And you're like, I should have, I should have just let it all out. I should have just let it all go. I should have done that. I should have, you know, because that's the way it is when you get to heaven, you realize you were holding on to something and you weren't fixing, you weren't, you weren't um, getting it right with God. You were holding on to something that God was telling you to do. It may be uh, involves spit and mud. It might be go show yourself to the priest. You know, Peter's mother-in-law, I mean, it took her an hour to get healed. It says that very hour, didn't say instantly. You know, those mother-in-laws, you know. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Things are a process. All right, so what the Lord is, is wanting to share tonight is going at the root of things. Now, you, can, you may not have 20 years left. So you don't want this process of getting to the root of something to go past a certain point. Because you're, everything about your life with, with Shalom. Becca, hi Becca. <laughs> shalom is seven different things, including prosperity, including healing, nothing missing, nothing broken. Shalom is seven different things to a Hebrew. When, when a Hebrew person says shalom, they mean go and be blessed, be prosperous, be healthy. May everything about you be at peace, you know, be, be perfect. That's the blessing that, 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 that Abraham got and that they pass on to each other. Okay, so in your finances, it doesn't matter if you don't believe in that prosperity stuff or whatever. There is no prosperity gospel, just like there's no healing gospel. There's the gospel, which includes all these things. But if I were you, I'd take a helping of everything that's on the table. Okay, so we're getting ready for what is next. What is next is that we're going through a period where we're going to have to walk supernaturally, and you're going to need to prosper. You're going to need to be healthy. You're going to need to hear God's voice. You're going to need to be able to deal with crazy relatives. You're going to need to, be, to deal with crazy people and know when to walk away. But you're going to need to prosper. You're going to need to be in health. You're going to need to be at peace. You're going to need to know when to go and when no. There's, you're a no-show. You're going to have to know when to eat and not to eat. You're going to need to know what to take and not to take. It's all supernatural from now on. So you're going to have to have that discernment that's through the roof that, like, I'm not eating that. And you don't know why. But you're not eating it. And then you find out later why you shouldn't have ate it. You're not going to take that. You're checking your bottles to see if they've been opened before. Come on now. What, what if the Holy Spirit is starting to prompt people to say, listen, walk in this way. Uh, don't do this. Don't go there. So in this dream, it was Jesus only. And Jesus was telling me that he's put his foot down. And he said from, you know, this, this whole month. And I warned my staff. I told them, I said, you're going you're gonna to hear and see things you, you cannot even believe. But the thing of it was, is what you'll find out when you get to heaven is that these things have been going on for a long time and they were hidden. And so you thought, well, why is this person still in the ministry? Why are they blessed? Why are they doing this? It's because God put a gift in them and it's for this generation and God is ministering to people. But if a person doesn't have the character to handle it or to, to walk in that, 
then they, Paul said, I mean, if you want to bring Paul into it, he says he could be disqualified after preaching Christ if he didn't discipline his body, that he could be a castaway or thrown aside. So no one wants to pick up this message, so I figured I had a couple minutes left today. I'll just do it. I got to tell you this, is that you got to go to the root. You know, I can save you. You can eat. You can actually eat twice tomorrow. You can eat five times tomorrow. You don't even have to miss a meal. You can get to the root of this. You don't have to fast. You don't have to give in the offering. You don't need my anointing to do this. You just have to have ears to hear, and then you have to obey. It's, it's that simple. It's, this has nothing to do with the anointing, actually. Even though Jesus has yoke-breaking anointing, and I get all that, we, we've, we've had that. But why aren't people being able to walk in character? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll show you how to do this. Is that the harmony that you have to have between yourself and God in heaven is you've got to be in agreement with him to begin with. So there's an interface that's very simple. I cannot walk with you unless I'm in agreement with you. And that's what it says, can two walk together unless they're in agreement? That's what I believe Solomon said. And so even in, in when you walk with people, like imagine Jesus on the road to Emmaus. He, they had to adjust their stride to walk with him. But they, they, they agreed to, to connect themselves to him and walk with him. However, when it came to where he acted, it says, as though he was going to continue on down that road. And they, their, their return was right there to go in. And so he acted as though he was going to keep on going. But what he was really doing was, was he's wanting them to invite him in. But if they had not, he would not have. Same with the boat. He was walking across the water because he said, go to the other side. I'm going to go and dismiss the people, and then I'll meet you over there. So when he walked past them in the storm, he was just doing what he said. It says that he was, gonna, he was walking as though he's going to pass on by, and they yelled out. They cried out to him. You know, they were word of faith, I'm sure. <laughs> we perish, you know. Well, what did Jesus say? Go to the other side. So he was just going to the other side. But when they asked him that for help, he came in and he helped them. But it appeared that he would keep on going. So this is, this is the, the harmony and the, the connection that you have with your Lord has been already done through the Spirit. It's already been established. Jesus Christ accomplished everything that we need for life and godliness. That means that everything we're going to need in this life from now on is already been given to us. Okay, so we know that if we stay in synchronization with him and with the Spirit, that, he, that God will lead us into all truth. But the only thing is, it, is that there's a whole bunch of things that God wants for you that you're not able to take on because you're not aware of what has been given to you. And it's, it's causing a burden on, on the body of Christ because of it. Because financially, you should all, we should all be doing better. Because we should be at least able to pay our bills and we should also be able to help others as well. So you, can't, you cannot mix these things. You cannot like mix, well, that's just the way my relatives are. Well, Jesus sees them saved. Amen. So you got to remember that. That yeah. your children that, that won't call you, that have left home, they won't call you. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're earmarked for, for, for God, and they're, they're coming home. I don't, care, I don't care how many bruises and cuts they get when the angel drags them home. They're coming home. You know what I mean? They, they can stand before you and be mad that they don't even know how they got there. They don't even know why they're there. But that's, that's the tenacity of what Jesus bought for us. Okay, it's the same way with your finances. You shouldn't just, just give up and roll over. Just because it's hard and just because you've done everything you can do, you know, the standard is up here. Come on now. I had to show the prince of this world. I had to show the God of this world, Satan. I had to show him that as far as our finances, he has nothing to do with them. I had to put my foot down. Everything that we did was in faith, knowing, knowing that we were touching the heart of God, and it was worship. 
and it had a purpose. Everything is earmarked. Everything about your life is for a plan and a purpose, but you have to offer it to God. Okay? Right? So if, if Jesus, if you adjust yourself so that you're walking in step with him, then you can walk with him and talk. And, and after a while, if you notice, you don't have to pay attention to the footsteps to stay in synchronization with somebody. After a while, you just get accustomed and you just walk with them. And then you're not so much focused on making each step count a certain way. But see, this is how Christians are today. We've been overtrained in certain areas to where we're so conscious of these, these things that I'm talking to you about that we forget. Let's remember to talk to Jesus because that's what we're supposed to be doing. You know? In other words, you know, you know, your footsteps might be pretty. You might be saying, I hope he doesn't notice that I didn't do my nails. My toenails are terrible. You know, my colors don't match my sandals. You know, in other words, like you, this is how we're trained. We're overtrained in certain ways. Um, you know, like I have never, never had an experience where I thought I didn't, I didn't fast, I didn't um, tithe. You know, when I'm talking to Jesus, none of this stuff comes to me. <laughs> I'm just like, what is, what is he saying? What's he saying? What's because you know that, that's the only thing that's important. And really, like, what I have to say isn't important, and me disagreeing with him is not really going to be any help at all. So it's not like, it's not like we, we're, I never think of my physical appearance. I never will say, Jesus, you know, can you hold off? I got to go take a shower. You know, or like, uh, I got to read my Bible. Or I got to go call and repent to somebody, you know. You don't think any of these things. The Lord is, is there, and you want to talk to him. You want to hear what he has to say. This is what prayer should be. This is how your life should be lived. You shouldn't be thinking about all the things you did wrong as you approach God, because we're supposed to be able to approach him with a clear conscience. What if, what if the only reason you're in the financial situation you are is because Satan hates you? What if that's the only reason? What if you get to heaven, you find out that it was nothing you did? What if you were just in a war? And you're thinking, man, I should have given that quarter when I was six years old and the Holy Spirit, <laughs> and the Holy Spirit was telling me, give me my quarter, you know, and I didn't give my quarter. Yeah, we laugh. We laugh at the bit. We're, we're like this. You know, we become religious in our efforts to become unreligious. We become religious. And, and, and God's not in any of it. And after tonight, when this goes out, when this goes out all over the world, everybody is going to look at their walk with God differently because this is how Paul preached. This is how Jesus preached. This is what the, 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 the disciples that became apostles that married the epistles. No, they didn't marry the epistles, but they, they died for what we're talking about here. And we've, we've kind of like not emphasized the things that they gave their life for. You, you, you know, and ju just to show you how demonic it is, uh, Satan has just completely taken out the stops. Completely. Can you imagine, you know, like, um, the messages that go forth by the Spirit and how, how liberating they are, okay? I've been doing this for seven years. Just, fire, just watching fire coming out of my mouth for seven years and knowing it's not me and knowing that I'm not this good and I'll never be this good. This is like, it's like a flamethrower. Okay, so think about this. Think about the disputes that are going on within the body of Christ over doctrine. And so you think about when I walked out here, before I shut my phone off, there was a comment. And it said, tell me you don't believe in the Trinity. A Christian saying, please admit to me you don't believe in the Trinity, because if you do, I'm done with you. This is what, this is like, this is it? Okay, it's like, you know what? Consider this the Last Supper. <laughs> so it's come down at the end of the age. You know, when Jesus was with John and he went into the water, the Father spoke. This is my Son in whom I'm well pleased. Listen to him, okay? So the Father was speaking from heaven. John was there. A whole bunch of people were there. And they were, 
they were observing this. So Father speaks to Jesus. Jesus is in the water. He didn't throw his voice up to heaven and bounce off the clouds and come back down. You know, it was the Father speaking about his Son. Okay, so what happens next? It, it just is amazing. The Spirit of God starts to descend, which isn't Jesus and which isn't the Father, as a dove on him. Okay, so there's the Trinity. Okay, so, you know, I guess, bye-bye, Last Supper, right? Okay, but this is, this is the stuff that you're going to deal with from now on. To get you to get out of stride, to get you out of synchronization with your walk with the Lord. And, and financial difficulties will do that. Okay, so I don't want that for you. But I don't want to be the only one in a room that believes that God can, can supernaturally prosper you. Because we all need that supernatural help. And it's not, it's, it's not because of the way that we've been taught. It's because of the story I shared. We did something out of what we had, and God came in in a supernatural way. Okay? He wants to do that in every area of your life. However, there's certain things that the Spirit, in order to walk in the Spirit, there's certain things that you personally have to make adjustments on. One of them is you've got to reconcile right now that the God that you worship, the, the Father Yahweh, He is love. Okay, so God is love. That means if you say, you don't say Yahweh, you say, hey, love, He's going to say, what do you want? He's going to answer you. Just like when you yell Jesus, he, he answers you. But if you say, hey, faithful and true, He's going to answer you because His his actual uniform has faithful and true on his leg. It says faithful and true on his leg. That's his name. Okay, so you have to match up. You have to synchronize certain things in the Bible in order to participate in that harmony of the supernatural. So your, your finances will get healed. But it won't be the mode in which you have been taught in the past. It's going to be supernatural because we have gone to this place in our walk with God where we walk in a command because we're sent. So we're under command and we're sent. And so you don't work it anymore. You just show up. Okay. All right. So Paul said this. Listen. Y'all, y'all, he's like talking to the spiritual people in, in Corinth. Now, John has already said God is love. And, you know, and, and we know that God is love. And we, we, we understand that, that we can't have fear and a spirit of fear because perfect love drives out fear. So if God is love and he's inside of us, then we can't have fear. So we can't really do anything out of fear. You can't answer somebody in fear. You can't respond in any way. You can't work in fear. You can't attend church in fear. You can't give in fear. You can't participate out of a motivation of fear because God is love. So your motivation is love. But you got to remember that if you're going to walk with God, if you're going to walk in the Spirit, you have to remember that God requires of himself everything that he requires of us because he's just okay which means that paul said if i were to speak with eloquence in in um in tongues and in, in, in earthly languages as well as heavenly tongues of angels yet i did not didn't express myself with love my words would be reduced to hollow sound of nothing more than a clanging cymbal and he goes on to talk about how um you know, you can give your, you can get, you can have prophecy and speak profound revelations, but it, but he's he's saying that if you don't have love, um, you you know it doesn't matter. You can give your body to be burned for Christ, but if it wasn't done in love, you know it was worthless. I mean, he goes on and on and on. That's not what I'm teaching on tonight, but I want you to see that Paul was addressing people that were that considered himself very spiritual. Okay, so all of us need to reconcile right now. Don't wait another minute. We need to reconcile within our hearts that the greatest gift that we have is the ability to love like he loved us, which means that our first reaction should be to, to, to do what 
God says that love is. If he's telling us to love and be a certain way, we know that he is that way toward us as well. So here is, here is what it, it says in verse 4, when you replace the word Yahweh or God for the word love, which should be sim, sim, uh, synchron, synchronized, right? They should be uh, the same, okay? So God is a large and incredible patient person. God is gentle and consistently kind to all. God refuses to be jealous when, when blessing comes to someone else. God does not brag about one's achievements nor inflate its own importance, his own importance. Love does not traffic in shame and disrespect nor selfishly seek its own honor. Love is not easily irritated or quick to, be, to take offense. Love uh, or God joyfully celebrates honesty. He, God finds no delight in what is wrong. God is a safe place of shelter for it never stops believing the best for others. And it just keeps going on and on. And if you put God in there, um, per perfect love or, or God never stops loving. He never, ex you know, he, he never gives up on you. Okay, so God would, would require himself to live by those same things that he would require you to. And this is very important because if you want to, to walk with each other, then you've got to have the same uh, playbook, the same strategy, but you also got to have the same understanding about things so that you don't pay attention to how they're walking in a step. You're in synchronization because you've agreed to walk together and it flows. You, you get into a synchronization and you just don't even concentrate on that anymore. And this is the way it is for everything. You know, when you get on a bicycle, when you get in a car, um, you know, after a while, it should get familiar with you. If not, please don't drive. <laughs> but it should get to where you're not staring at the gas tank. And unless you drive around on empty all the time, then yes, you have a good reason to do that. But you learn not to like focus on on certain things anymore. Honk if you love Jesus. <laughs> if you if you if you if you notice you don't after a while you, it just comes second nature about your bicycle about your car um you you know that tsa is going to take all your clothes off you know you just expect it you know you just you 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 get to the where the things don't bother you as much anymore because it's just part of the of, of what it is but with others you need to be careful and be patient and forgiving and kind because you, we still have to walk together. But in that walking together, we strengthen each other. We encourage each other into good works is what the, 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 you know, the Bible says. So we encourage each other into the supernatural. Okay, so Paul said, when I was a child, I spoke like a child. For I, you know, and I, I was familiar with childish matters before I saw things like a child and I reasoned like a child, but there came a day when I matured and I set aside my childish ways. For now we see as, as a faint reflection of riddles and, myster and mysteries as though they were reflected in a mirror, but one day we're going to see face to face. Amen. Okay, so one day we're going to see clear. Okay, but in the spirit, your spirit picks up on things that have to do with perfection. You pick up on things, you know how it should be. You know how your bank account should be. You know how your job should be. You know how your relatives should behave. You know how things should be. And then you see that they're not. And then instead of reacting as though you're walking with the Lord in synchronization, you get frustrated. And when you get frustrated, you get out of sync. You're not in a harmony anymore with the spirit because you've gone into the soul and it's going to start working on your body and on your mind. And then what's going to happen is before you know it, you're going to get addicted to other things. You're going to, you're going to need other things because you're not hooked up with your source anymore with the vine. Amen. I don't know why more people are not preaching the gospel. But see, the gospel is supposed to be preached so that you're delivered, you're healed, you're set free. 
that there's jubilee, which is debt cancellation. There, there should be demons leaving. There should be sicknesses leaving. You're, there shouldn't be poverty. I mean, if it keeps up, I'm moving to Ukraine. I mean, that's where all the money is. I mean, at least I'll get my tax return back, right? All right. I have to make you laugh because I know these messages are hard. But see, the, the knife has to be laid. Uh, we have to have surgery. We have to get to the root of things. We have to, un, we, the, understanding yourself has more to do about understanding God than we want to admit. We have to go back to the original source of how we came to pass, why we're here, why we were made in his image, what that all meant. What does the fall mean? What happened at the fall? And what did Jesus come to reconcile us back to? You've got to know these things in order to understand yourself because you're not going to understand yourself. And unless you realize how you were made and why you're not able to function down here is because you're in a broken world and you've allowed yourself to be frustrated when God holds himself at the same level he holds you at. So when he puts his foot down and he says, now you put your foot down, well, that's because he trusts you that you're walking with him and that you're going to do exactly what he says to do. So if you obey his commands, you love him. That's what Jesus said. If you love me, you obey my commands. He said, you can ask whatever you will and it'll be done for you. Okay, so if you're going to have a supernatural encounter with God, it's going to be because of repentance. It's going to be the turning away from your wicked ways. It's, it's just the way it is. Everyone has to do it. No one wants to do this kind of message because there's empty seats the next time. But see, Jesus emptied out places all the time when he felt like people were falling on for the wrong reason because they were looking at the menu, the fishes and the loaves. They were fed, he said, and that they were looking at the healings. He realized they weren't following him for the right reasons. He said, you, you follow me. You, you came because uh, you were fed and you saw the miracles. So he said, from now on, unless you drink my blood and eat my flesh, you have no part of me. It says they all left him. It says, it says that many left him that day. Some say they all left. Why did he do that? Because what he wanted was a higher standard of commitment. Hmm. Okay. So the other, um, the other scripture, that, so that's 1 Corinthians 13. And you replace God in there where it says love. And then you'll understand who God is. Because God's more patient with you than you are with yourself. And certainly more patient than you are with others. He's more patient with you than you are with others. That felt good. I'm going to say it again. All right. So he is more patient with you than you are with others. Okay. The other thing is, is that in, in Paul also said, and in, in, I have to include this in on chapter 5 of, of, of Galatians. In verse 16 and onward, as far as I can, I mean, I am like holding on to the pulpit. I'm like ready to fall right now. I am so over, overcome right now. Um, but we got to finish this. Um, as you yield, verse 16 of chapter 5 of Galatians says, As you yield freely and fully to the dynamic life and power of the Holy Spirit, you will abandon the cravings of the self-life. I mean, we might as well just go all go to get some food, you know, because I mean, what else is there to say? Because this is the bottom line is, is you have to you have to reconcile in order to walk in the spirit and encounter the power of the spirit. It says how to do it. You will have to abandon the cravings of your self life. It says you're you have as you yield freely and fully to the dynamic power of the Holy Spirit in his life. You must abandon the cravings of your self-life. For your self-life craves the things that offend the Holy Spirit. Okay, and so I, I, I know what's going on with all of us is that we haven't come to reconcile. We want all the supernatural. We want the next offer that they give on its supernatural. But we want to be on the show. 
But the, the thing it is, is that show is meant to present what God is doing in people's lives to spur us on. It was not meant for anything other than that. Okay, in your life, you're a trophy that God wants to display in this age that we're in and the age to come. He wants to do things through you, but he does not want it to appear as though it could have been you or you were friends with the Christian cartel. If you were part of a cartel or if you're a part of an organization that promoted you from within, or if you did anything where it, it looks like it could, you could have manipulated it, or if you're living in sin and yet it appears that you're prospering, well, that's not fair either, because what happens when it's exposed? That's what Paul's trying to address here, is that if you want, if you want to participate in the supernatural power of God, then, then there's certain things about your, your self-life that have to go. Because the Spirit can't agree with it. But you, you can offend the Holy Spirit, and, and no one would know it. And, and you, could, you could not do without for many, many years. And no one would be able to understand why, but you know why. Right. See, somebody's got to come at you this way and tell you, listen, we can all take care of some things in our lives. And we all can be humble. And we can all say, listen, we need help. But God is not mocked. That's, that's what I'm here tonight for. Is God is not mocked. A man's reaping what he sows. So if somebody is having something happen, you cannot blame God. Please stop blaming God. If you planted corn, that's what's coming up. Don't say to God, well, you know, I didn't plant corn. Because God's going to say you're a liar. I'm not mocked. You're reaping what you sowed. That's what that verse means, okay? Man. Okay, so your self-life craves the things that offend the Holy Spirit. I have never been preached this. I have never been preached this. So I'm preaching it. It actually feels pretty good. Because I feel like it, it I feel like the fear of the Lord is clean. I feel like the Lord the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, you know, just to quote the Bible, you know. I think that that at the end of the age more more fivefold ministers should rise up and preach the gospel, preach the, the good news of the gospel, and just leave it at that. Leave it at that, and let's see what happens when we bind and we loose. When we start binding and loosing at, in synchronization with the Holy Spirit, I'm telling you, things will flip very quickly. And this has been the problem. That's why things have been stolen, stolen, stolen continually. Because the church is the one who is supposed to make the decisions. The unjust balances, all the lying and stealing, it can be overturned by God's righteous decree coming through the bride. The righteous decree must be made through the church. That's what God chose, was the church in order to rule and reign down here. God's plan is the church. It's always been the church. It will always be the church. That's God's plan, okay? All right, so if, if your self-life and its cravings offend the Holy Spirit, then for you to try to do other things in order to, to fix it is, is not going to work. So what happens is, is you get manipulated into giving offerings and doing, you know, do this and do that, buy my book, do all this, and then, you know, it'll be better. Sleep with my book under your pillow. I've heard that too. It's like, <laughs> yeah, you got to be kidding, man, you know. You got to be kidding. How about, if, how about if I don't? How about if I buy all your books and then dump them in the river, you know? All right, so the, the Holy Spirit is saying that he's offended by our cravings of our self-life and that it hinders him from living free within you, it says. Okay, and that's all in verse 7. Okay, the Holy Spirit's intense cravings 
also, the Holy Spirit's intense cravings also hinder your self-life. So I'm announcing to you all that you all gotten into works. We've all gotten into works. We're in the works. We're trying to work it instead of taking God's grace and what he's given us and letting it flow through our lives. It's just the connections. You, you just connected the red wire with the green wire. You just need to reconnect the wires. They're, they're all connected wrong, and so you're not in synchronization. You're not in harmony. Um, I like this message. I'm really having a good time. All right, so <laughs> Holy Spirit's intense cravings hinder your old self-life from dominating you. Is what the scripture says. So then, that's, I mean, that's good news. That's the gospel, okay? So, you're, if the Holy Spirit is wanting to be your intense cravings that cause the, the crushing of yourself and your will, then so be it. But he is a person. He is a person that is here with us. He is the Trinity. He's part of the Trinity. So it doesn't, it doesn't, it just, it hurts that it, this person's probably a minister and he's, I, they're a Christian and they're coming against the Trinity as I walk here, out here to talk about this. It hurts me that God's own are being used by Satan Amen. to sabotage a message that hasn't even been preached yet. It's, it is now, but I mean, this person doesn't know that. They're not that good. Okay. So it says here, but when you are brought into the full freedom. Oh, wait a minute. It says here, so then the two incompatible and conflicting forces within you are your self-life and your flesh and your new creation life of the spirit. So there, there's that, that war going on between your self-life and your new creation life. But when you are brought into full freedom of the spirit of grace, not of faith, not of giving, the spirit of grace, <laughs> you will no longer be living under the domination of the law. You're going to be soaring above it is what it says. Okay. Verse 19, the cravings of the self-life are obvious. Sexual immorality, lustful thoughts, pornography, chasing after things instead of God, manipulating others, hatred of those who get in your way. <laughs> That's a good one. Senseless arguments, resentment when others are favored, temper tantrums, angry quarrels, only thinking of yourself. These are all works of the flesh that hinder the spirit. Um, being in love with your own opinions. <laughs> Oh, here's another one. Being envious of the blessings of others. Murder. Oh, in the same breath, all these, you know. Murders in there too. Uncontrolled addictions, wild parties, and all these other similar behaviors. Haven't I already warned you, Paul said, that those who use their freedom in Christ for these things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. So there's people that use their freedom to energize these activities. And the Jesus I met when I was in heaven, there are people that think they're going to heaven that are not. This is the first time I've ever said this because, you know, I, I offend people already enough, you know. But I'm telling you is that if Paul said this and he was caught up, and Jesus talked about this, that there's going to be many come to him and say, didn't we perform miracles and, and cast out demons and all these things? And he says, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Uh, you know, how would Ananias and Sapphira drop dead in church, you know? And they didn't even help him. They didn't coach them. They didn't like, you know, pastoral counsel them before they turned them over to Satan, you know, or anything. They, Peter didn't even like give them a counseling session. Didn't have a prophecy for him. Nothing. Nobody helped them in the church. Nobody in the congregation 
help them because there was hours, if you check it out, there was hours between Ananias and Sapphira's death because Sapphira had a lot of hair and she was late. She came to the second service. But she, she could have been told. Somebody could have messaged her on Facebook, you know, and let her know. Nobody did. Nobody warned her. Peter didn't warn her. He said, is this what you paid for it? Oh, you know. And Peter sounded a little, a little too excited about it. He says, well, the same men, that, the, the ushers, you know, that took the offering, that carried your husband out, they're going to take you out. Where's the love? Well, see, they were already had this message. They already were supposed to live this way. Oh, boy. Okay. All right. So the fruit produced by the Holy Spirit within you, and this is the verses you know in 22 of, of chapter 5 of Galatians. The, the fruit produced... By the Holy Spirit within you is divine love in all its varied expressions. Joy that overflows, peace that subdues, patience that endures, uh, kindness that is action, life full of virtue, faith that prevails, gentleness of heart, and strength of spirit. Never set the law above these qualities, for they are meant to be limitless. Okay, keep in mind that we who belong to Jesus, the anointed one, have already experienced crucifixion. Okay, so this is the way the gospel was, was presented to the people there in the New Testament, brand new church that would explode into thousands every week. It would grow and grow and grow, but people at times would, would die or things would happen. But there was also all these deliverances. There's all these different uh, supernatural things that happened. But... I'm telling you, the standard that they lived at at that time is supposed to be the standard that we live at today. But the cultures and the times that we have gone through in different times, it appears that the emphasis that the gospel is being preached with is on certain things based on the economy. But when there's a disease of the weak, then all of a sudden there's not much on healing anymore. Or when the economy goes bad, you know, there's not as much of the, of the messages about prosperity or it's not emphasized in the same way or whatever. And, you know, I, I don't know what else to say about it because I can't breathe right now over it. I get very frustrated that the bottom line is, is that God is supposed to be working in you, his good will, which means his good will would be for you to have everything you need and also for others around you to have everything that they need. And this would mean that not only are you to walk in he health and healing, but you're able to lay hands on others and they would be healed. And it would not be because you were an apostle or a fivefold minister. It was based on the fact that you were a believer. And it's the same thing with prosperity. Listen, I have, I have had large amounts of supernatural finances come because I gave to children, not to a minister. They didn't have a book. They didn't have a TV show. They didn't even give me a giving receipt. <laughs> I've had children give me every, I mean, they, they gave everything they had. I, I mean, I have had just recently, I had a little boy show me his favorite toy because he was playing. He was playing with his favorite toy. And at the end, well, as I was going out to leave to go to the airport, he, he handed it to me and he goes, Jesus told me to give you my toy. Okay. All right, so we know that in Romans chapter 8, we know exactly what it says there. That, and this is, oh, man, it's already quarter to nine. Oh, man. Oh, good. Okay, so the, the, the scriptures... Literally, when you get to heaven, you will see that the scriptures 
are actually supposed to be overlaid over your life. So they become your, your boundaries, your template, your p parameters. But uh, it's not known that way down here. Everything's kind of, uh, you know, it's kind of mixed up and it depends upon who you listen to. Um, it's, it's, you know, who, who you are under. It's all these different things. And the books you've read, the schools you've gone to, it, it kind of like, it, it creates a fabric in your life. However, when things aren't working and it's because it's wrong, but it hasn't been evident that it was wrong. When it starts to become obvious to you that, 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 that the framework that has been woven into your life, that it's not accurate. Because um, you might not even, and I'll tell you a perfect example. I'll, I'll tell you a perfect example. You might not believe that demons can have influence on you. You may not even believe, you know, I don't believe they can get in your spirit, but they can get into your soul and they can manifest because I've had them happen. I've had ministers manifest. Okay, if, if you don't believe me, just start listening to Derek Prince for a while. And, and you're going to either hate him or love him because something's going to happen to you. Same with Lester Summer. If you, if you start putting yourself, in other words, you should let some ministers who are generals from the past who, who preached, you need to let them weave into your life too as well. But they may have touched something in their life that they're imparting to others that you may need touched. And it may not come from what's available now because it might have clicked down a couple notches, which it has, okay? So you've got, you've got to hate the devil. If you see a devil, you need to grab it by the neck and shake it so that it never forgets. <laughs> never to show its ugly face again. You have to be that way. You have to be that way. Listen, if you knew, if you knew what already happens around you in the spirit realm, if you, if you knew what I, I've had to learn, if you had eyes to see and you knew what was going on, you would be grabbing the devils and shaking them and kicking them around because they are, they are cloaked. And they have compromised ministers. Oh, well. All right, backing out. Backing out of the cave. Okay. No, you, you, no, you don't understand. You don't understand. Until you encounter the real, you don't know what the real is. You just know it looks like gold. Okay, so here Paul says the same kind of things. He said, he said uh, that now the case against you is closed. Well, if it's closed, that, 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 that means your past is gone. Your case against you is closed. The accusing voice against you has been silent. You've been joined with life union in the anointed one. For the law of the spirit of life flowing through the anointing of Jesus has already liberated you from the law of sin and death. For God achieved what the law was unable to accomplish because the law was limited by the wickedness of human nature or the weakness of human nature. Yet God sent his son, so this is a solution, in human form to identify with human weakness. Clothed with humanity, God's son gave his body to be a sin offering so that God could once and for all condemn the guilt and the power of sin. So that's it. I mean, Jesus has already done all this, and he's seated at the right hand of God. He has condemned sin. And he, and it, and he says the, the guilt and the power of sin. So no more guilt, no more power of sin in your life. Okay, you... I know that if you all get this, you won't be back at one of these meetings. You're going to be downtown handing out food and casting out devils. I'll know when everybody gets this because they're going to be out there doing it because something's going to happen. Amen. The tables are going to flip. The devils are going to scream. And then there's going to be white flags everywhere because they're just going to start turning themselves in. They're going to give up their positions and leave. They're going to vacate rather than fight. Okay. 
feel like I'm in the Amazon with a machete right now, so just hold on here. Okay, yet God sent his son, and, and he was clothed with humanity to take care of this. So it's done. It's been announced. It's been condemned. Okay, so no more guilt, no co- more condemning voice. The case against you is closed, period. Okay, that's it. Okay, so if this really is convincing you now, then you're going to start walking in step with the Spirit, which means then fellow believers that are also doing this, you're going to start to encounter a harmony and a synchronization with each other. And, and then that's the unity that's coming to the body of Christ. It's coming through the agreement of the Spirit. You all agree with the Spirit, and you've agreed to walk with Him. Just like you would agree to walk with Jesus on the road to Emmaus, you might have had to step it up or slow it down. But if you want to talk to somebody, you're going to go ahead and do that. The Spirit is doing certain things, certain ways, and you have to be ready to do it that way. If He's spitting on people, then you've got to spit on them, and you've got to mix it with mud. You know, you know what I'm saying. You know, Jesus did certain things, at times, demons left with a word. Sometimes he laid hands on people. The people were healed by a word. Sometimes they had to go show themselves to a priest. It didn't say that he laid hands on them. It, that there was all kinds of ways. But God still healed. But the way that he did it is his choosing, and that's what you should give him in your life. If you're supposed to be somewhere else, and you need to be somewhere else. If you're supposed to say something, then you need to say it. If you're supposed to be quiet, please be quiet. If you're not supposed to drive, please do not drive. Okay, but in other words, be in synchronization and you will start to see a manifestation of unity. Because we're all going to walk in the Spirit. But we've already gone over that we can offend the Spirit, that we can be an enemy of the Spirit, we can grieve Him. So if we know that we can do that, then it also says that we can walk in step with him and please him. Well, he wants to help all of us, but the help that I'm talking about is a supernatural deluge where it's it's beyond comprehension that it becomes evident that God is with you. Where everyone knows it, it couldn't have been you. I mean, your friends and family already know that, but I mean, you know, the public. But, but um, here, here is, for now, every righteous requirement of the law has been fulfilled through the anointed one living in us. So it says in verse 4, okay, of chapter 8. Moving on. Okay, so we are free to live, but not according to the flesh. But we are free to live by the dynamic power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so that sounds like you have to be spiritual. If you're not going to live by the flesh, but you're going to live by the power of the Spirit, well, that's going to that's gonna be evident. Okay, but this is a righteous requirement that has been placed in us for everyone, not just ministry, just not ministers. It's for the body. And this is where we've gotten off, but we're getting back on, aren't we? Because the body is rising up. It's the body. And um, the fivefold is rising up to their, their call and serving the body. They're serving the body. They're carrying your luggage instead of you carrying it for them. That goes over well. But <laughs> Jesus didn't come to be served. He came to serve. So why, why, do, why do we get people to serve us? If he didn't even... He didn't consider... Equality with God is something that could be grasped. But he became a servant. (laughs) Yeah, that's still in the Bible. Okay, so those who are motivated by the flesh. This is my favorite verse, and this is where we'll go on after this. But this is where, uh, this is what I was going to start with. And everything else that I just gave you was something that he just gave me when the person that doesn't believe in the Trinity came at me. And um, he had given me all these other scriptures that I had a place in here brand new. The pie was still hot, you know, still steaming. And um, this is my favorite verse for this generation right now. This is, this is more fun to me than anything else that I, I, I can do right now. The, the, the best thing I can do is what I'm about to tell you. Because this is the bottom line. This is the root of what's going on inside of you. That, that just needs to be changed by the Holy Spirit tonight. 
Verse 5. Drum roll. <laughs> Those who are motivated by the flesh only pursue what benefits themselves. <laughs> I, have, I am so drunk when I say that. I said that I was rec recording this week a course on this that will come out next year. And I got so drunk. I just got drunk again. <laughs> it says that it's, it says that those who are motivated by the flesh only pursue what benefits themselves. And so this is how you can tell if the spirit is operating or if the flesh is operating. Is it benefiting themselves what they're doing? You know, and just whittling down Gideon's army, you know. It started with 32,000, now it's down to 300. But you know what? Those 300 beat the pants off the enemy, you know. But see, all we need is people that discern who they are and what their purpose is. And they know that they've been chosen. We've all been chosen. But we're, you know, the thing of it is, is that many are called, but few are chosen. Because the calling is for everybody. But the, cho the choosing is has to do with Gideon's army, but nobody wants to admit it. And, and, and people bark at me for saying these things because they, it doesn't fit in. It doesn't fit in with their repertoire, with their books and their DVDs and their, you know, doesn't get good offerings. But the bottom line is, is that I watch for the manifestation of the Spirit in people's lives. If I don't see that, then I have a list of the other things that are manifesting. I have the big list of, of, the, of, the, of the things of the flesh. And I also have the shorter list of the fruit of the Spirit, which is the personality of God. It's God's character. You know, God is love, but He's also joy. And, he's, and, and it's kindness and, and self-control. God is self-controlled. You know, so he, he's controlled. He'd like to backhand all of us. But, but Jesus took that upon himself. So God doesn't do his first impulse. Jesus didn't do his first impulse. So you shouldn't do your first impulse. Your first impulse may be a reaction to your past. From your, it might be a root of your past. And you respond a certain way because you have been hurt and trained that way. And you may need to consider that self-control is a fruit of the Spirit. That is a personality of God himself. And so God even sits and thinks about it. And sometimes Moses has to talk to him about it. Well, if you wipe them out, Lord... Okay, so Jesus took all of that upon himself, which means that any anger, any kind of manifestation that you may feel in your, in your uh, flesh, in your mind about God being angry, you've got to remember that he already took his anger out on Jesus. So your first response should be thinking about love because that's God's first response according to scripture. God is love. So his first response is he's going to be kind. He's going to, he's going to forgive you and he's going to forget it. He doesn't keep records of wrongs. So if he's telling you to not keep records of wrongs and to forgive, then he has to do it himself as well. Now, God doesn't have to do anything, but his righteous requirement that he put on himself through the covenant was that if he's going to have a standard that he's holy, then he, for him to say, be holy as I'm holy, or you're the righteousness of God, Christ Jesus, he had to have made it available and possible for us in order to require it. And he would have to live by the same standard because that's part of the covenant. Okay, so if he's prosperous and he's sitting up there with no need and you're his child, he's not going to give you a snake if you ask for bread. Because that is who he is, but he's also preemptively committed himself to this before we were born. 
that Jesus would be the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. All this was to be taken care of. So your debt, everything about your life right now, your sicknesses, everything, you have to consider the fact that God preemptively took care of those things. But it is based on you synchronizing with him in harmony with him so you can walk with him in what he has established as being the truth, not what you feel, not what you've been told. You may need to tear the fabric up of what's been woven in your life about your beliefs. It may not be scriptural. It may not be practical. It has to be able to be implemented every day. It has, it has to work in any nation. It has to work in jail. No, I don't think you get it. I, I, I'm believing you do, but you've got to understand something. Would you be willing to die for what you're believing for? I mean, or when you pray and you're believing for something that's on a shelf at Amazon, are you, are you willing to die for it? No. But if you seek the kingdom, all these other things will be added to you as well. But... You'd be willing to die for Jesus. Let's just keep it simple. And if Amazon delivers, then they deliver. But you know what? You're not seeking these things anymore. Okay. So God wants you to prosper. He wants you to be in health. He wants you to have healing in every area of your life. He wants you to walk and, and have a command about you. He wants you to lend to many, but you borrow from none. He wants... The, the, the enemy to come at you one way and flee in seven ways. Yes. You're the head. You're not the tail. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you this because you're going to be tempted in the days to come to compromise. You're going to be tempted to fold. You're going to be tempted to not believe that God's your healer, that he's your provider. You're going to be tempted to, that you, you can't hear God because you can hear God. Yeah. He's your father. You're his flesh and blood. Come on now. You've got a direct line. You can hear from God. And you can, you can prosper too. You can be in health, even as your soul's prospering. I mean, if you want to bring the Bible into it, you know. Paul believed in that stuff, you know. And, he, and the last time I checked, none of you are writing scripture right now. So, Okay, so anyway, we, we, we have to graduate to where we live by the impulse. It says, it says this thing here in verse 7. It says, um, in fact, the mindset focused on the flesh fights God's plan and refuses to submit to his direction. But the verse before that says that we are motivated to pursue spiritual realities, realities and live by the impulses of the spirit. So there's only two choices. So there's the impulses and mindsets of the spirit and impulses and mindsets of the flesh. But it says here that the mindset focused on the flesh fights. It says fights God, God's plan. This is what I'm seeing, but nobody wants to call it because you won't come back. See, you won't come back to church if pastor starts saying these things that you won't give in the offering because you're punishing him. Okay, but... God finds no pleasure in those who are controlled by the flesh. It says it right there. I could read it upside down. And it still says the same thing because my iPad automatically corrects it. <laughs> Which comes in handy in the fighter jet when you're upside down. When I'm upside down, it's so cool. It, it, it follows me. So if I need to like figure out where the airport is and I'm upside down, I can just, it's right there. It's like amazing. Okay. The Spirit wants us to walk in synchronization with him in harmony with him in the days ahead but it's going to be a supernatural uh, interaction between us but we're going to have to allow our, our 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 spirits to rule us and and start to walk in step with the spirit which means that we don't want to be controlled by the flesh we want to be controlled by the spirit which means that there is a mindset that is of the flesh but that is an enemy of god it says that it it, it controls you and it prevents you from walking in, in in the power of God and pleasing God. So those who are dominated by the flesh cannot please God. And it says, in fact, it is an enemy of God. 
Most translations say that. Okay, so Jesus raised us up. In verse 11 it says, yes, he raised us up. We've been fully accepted by God, and he's raised us up is what it says. So we're all raised up, but we're fully accepted. So that is our starting point. That's the sweet spot. That's where after you allow the past to be erased, because it is, once you reset, once after tonight, you, you walk out of here, and you know now that this is the truth. The truth is right here in verse 11. We've been raised to life. And since God's spirit of resurrection lives in us, he will also raise and, and it says that he will, he, will, um, he will quicken our mortal bodies. That he'll like electrocute them. And like, and like you'll come down with a healing. And it's just, it's a resurrection power. But it says we live by the resurrection power. We're fully accepted and we have the resurrection power within us. And this causes us to walk with him. So this is, this, th the spirit does not leave me because I go to work. The spirit doesn't leave me when I'm upside down, when I'm going 600 miles an hour, or I'm walking backwards. If I'm shooting a gun, or if I'm cleaning my gun, the spirit is not in any way, nothing changes because it's part of my life. Everything I do, whether I'm giving or not giving, whether I'm sleeping or awake, God is with me and the spirit is there with me. The Spirit only leaves you when you grieve Him by yielding to the flesh. The Spirit's not grieved because you go to work. Just because you can't pray in tongues like a wild person, it doesn't matter. You can pray silently to yourself. You're in synchronization with Him. You're in harmony with the Spirit of God. You please the Spirit because you're submitting to the Spirit. Okay. All right, all right. so now, because you graduate, I'm going to skip through all those verses of Romans 8. Okay, so now, okay, so now, here's the mindset. In Genesis 1, 1, to know the Holy Spirit, you've got to realize that he was at creation. So he was at the beginning of all things. So you've got to remember that the Holy Spirit that we want to stay in step with, he is a person and he was there at creation. So in Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, it says, In the beginning, God created the heaven and earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Okay, so at, at uh, the studies that I've done over the years, it, it's been determined that it's the idea of brooding, like a hen brooding over her, her eggs so that they would, they would uh, hatch. And that is the idea of the Spirit of God being there at creation so that when the Father spoke, that things began to form at His command, but the Spirit was part of that because it was right there, it was over the earth. And things were void and, and unformed, but things started to be formed and things were created. And that's the whole idea. This needs to come back to the body of Christ. We need to hear more about this because the Holy Spirit that's inside of you is the same Holy Spirit that at the command of the Father started creating things. Come on now. You've got to remember this, that inside of you right now. And I mean, you, you'd have to be a dead person right now if your spirit is not jumping at what I'm saying. Because the Spirit is, 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 is wanting more things like this being spoken in the days that we're in, in the days ahead. We need to know that the Holy Spirit can make something out of nothing. So the Spirit is waiting for God's command over your life. But see, God has already commanded certain things over your life. There are certain things that you can do right here in your car when you get home at work. You can say certain things that have already been said by God that will begin to manifest because the Spirit is brooding and the Spirit is living in you and the holy angels around you, they hear that. When you start to say things that God has pronounced and announced and made covenants with you about, but you don't know about them, and yet all of a sudden you, you either by the Spirit start to say them or you read them in the Bible and you say them, once they become vocal and they come into this realm, 
then all of a sudden the spirit is no longer just brooding. The spirit is wanting to create and make something out of nothing. And that's why God speaks those things that are not as though they are. Because to him they are. They're just lagging behind. And he's wondering, like, why are you lagging behind? I said, light be. I said, I said, separate between the waters. I said, you know, day and night, planets, this and that. And so over your life now, when you wake up tomorrow, when you pray, what you're doing is you're siding with the one that created everything you see. Everything that was made was made through Jesus Christ. You've already uh, committed to him. His word is life. His words are life. It's not just a book. His words are life. His, it's, he said they're spirit and they're life. So the transference from a, a word that you speak out from the, from the word of God, if you speak it out by the spirit, then it becomes spirit, even though it was a word on a piece of paper. You have to start to see God as being in command of your future and that he wants you to participate in painting your picture for you. And like Bob Ross, he can fix anything. And God doesn't even have an afro. But God can fix anything. Anything. So he's painting your life. But he wanted us from the beginning as children to participate with him in a relationship. Where we walked this out and we saw the favor of God come into our life. And that manifestation caused us to be a trophy in this generation. Amen. And the trophy is, is that God did something and you did, you did nothing. Because he, Jesus said this, without me you can do nothing. Amen. I haven't heard that in years, you know. Amen. When is that going to start being preached again? Without me, he said it in John 15 because he was teaching them that the flow came from the vine. Yeah. And if you're hooked up with the vine then you're going to participate or partake of the divine, the divine nature, the vine. You're in the vine. It's divine. It's always been divine. <laughs> What's the matter, you? <laughs> it's divine. So the connection, Jesus said, is that without me, you can do nothing. I'm your source. But because I'm your source, he said something profound that no scholar has ever been able to explain or disprove. And that is, is it? He said, because of this, you can ask anything you desire, not anything you need, whatever you will, and it shall be done for you. Now, in heaven, this is totally understood, but on the earth, it is a fight because no one, no one on the enemy's side wants you to walk in this. No one wants on the enemy's side wants you to tell them what to do. They don't want you to know that you can do this. So the Spirit is, I mean, I pray in tongues, and then something will come out in English. But you, you wouldn't believe how many times this happens. It happens almost every day. I'm praying. I'm pacing the floor. Because I'm not going anywhere unless he goes with me. And I'm saying, Lord, if you're not going with me. And the power of God came on me so strong yesterday, I couldn't, e I couldn't even, I couldn't handle it. And I told Kathy, I said, I just, we just need to go right now and preach. I said, I cannot. I don't know what to do. I got to go do something. But I can't just sit here and fry. But I, I can't do anything. But I'm praying. And you know what the Lord continually, because I'm like, okay, Lord. You know, because all, everybody, everybody wants to focus on what happened today, and then that means this is going to happen tomorrow. You know, and as some people, the seals, some of the seals have been broken, and the bowls are tipping over right now, and, you know, the abyss is open. And, you know, and the Lord, you know what he says to me? It's not every single day when I pray in tongues, he says, it's not over until I say it's over. Right? You know, so that's what the Spirit says. Yeah. 
So the Spirit's like praying for children to, to grow up. You're going to help this child. They're going to grow up and be a pilot. They're going to, you're going to help this child. They're going, to, they're going to do this, this, and this. And you're going to help this family. You're going to, he's, the Spirit is talking to me about plans and purposes for, for people's children in this room. Amen. He's not like talking about the dragon. Or, or The Spirit is, is speaking as though this whole generation and the next generation because the spirit does not know according to jesus does not know when jesus is coming back jesus said that no one knows not no, only the father he says the angels don't know the son doesn't know and it says that the spirit doesn't know so the angels the spirit and the son do not know when the second coming is or the rapture whatever you want to call it you know, i mean i say them all because then i offend everybody but the bottom line is is that we know that 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 there are there is a second coming we know there's also a catching away we, we know that by scripture okay so we know that these things will happen but paul said there's all these things that have to happen in thessalonians he said all these things have to happen before this can happen and so he was talking them back to work he said you know if you don't work you don't eat so they go back to work and you know the antichrist cannot be uh seated until the one who's holding him back is removed and you know who that is and and, and we, for some reason, because we're so lukewarm, we don't know who it is. It's the church, of course. But we're here. We, it can't happen while we're here. We're waiting for the rapture, and the enemy can't seat the Antichrist while we're here. So we're waiting for the rapture, and God's waiting for the harvest. And guess who the workers are? Guess who the workers are? The people that are waiting for the rapture. The ones that quit their jobs, you know. So Paul says, man, you know, you all got to get back in the saddle. You got to buy your saddle. You got you to gotta buy all your equipment back, uh, get your horse back and get on it and start riding. You know, and you're like, well, no, no, you know, and, and that's, this, is, this, is the, this has always been the case, I would say, in every generation based on the studies. Okay, the only thing is, is that in this generation, I've never seen things ratchet up so fast, so quickly. And uh, I've never seen anything like this because I study history like you can. And you look at everything the way it is. I, this is a total mystery. And the only conclusion I have is that when I pray in tongues, the Spirit says it's not over until I say it's over. And, and I realize, you know what? I'm going to make kids' dreams happen for them. I'm going to make things happen. If they're not happening, I'm just going to, you know, I'm, I'm going to stir it up. Might use a cattle prod. I don't know. But I'm going to stir it up. I mean, whatever it takes, right? right? I mean, Paul said, am I coming to you with a hug or with a whip? You decide. That was an apostle, you know. He said, am I coming to you? You decide how I'm coming. But I'm coming, he said. But you decide. But right now, I'm very upset. And I'm afraid there's going to be some arguments and some displays. Um, it's not going to be pretty. So you, you decide uh, how I come. But he's like cleaning his whip. He's getting ready just in case um, they didn't seem to get it. He, they're going to get it when pressure is applied to their backside. So, so John 14, 26 says, but the comforter, okay, the comforter, not the, the convictor of sin. Now, the only reason I say this is because G, Jesus clearly said that, that the spirit convicts the world of sin and of righteousness. I mean, you forget that, but that's in the Bible. Okay. John says we don't sin. But if we do, we have an advocate with the Father. But he said we don't sin. Could it be we're down a couple notches? Could, be, could it be that you need a 25-speed bike instead of your 10-speed? Could it be that, that something has been stolen from us? In the apostles' mind, according to Scripture, it says we don't intentionally sin. We don't sin. But if we do, then we have an advocate with the Father. Okay, so the Comforter comes, and the Comforter is the Holy Spirit. Now, he's talking to believers. So the Holy Spirit to a believer is a Comforter. But to the world, the Holy Spirit is a whole different person. 
And you need to frame your mind this way because you've got to be able to understand that the Holy Spirit to you is not how he's going to be to the world. When, when the Holy Spirit starts to come upon people of the world, they feel convicted. When the Holy Spirit comes upon the church, they feel drunk. They feel joy, self-control, and kindness. <laughs> Am I... A, what has happened? The Holy Spirit does not convict the body of Christ of sin. It says, he, Jesus said the Spirit convicts the world of sin and of righteousness. See what I mean? Y'all are just like, some new doctrine. No, I know y'all are getting it. Okay. I'm just kind of joking with you, but this will play for many years, you know, and the next generation is probably still waiting for the white horse, still waiting for, you know, everything to wrap it up, and they're the, you know, and Jesus sends them every, for every Christmas, he sends them a card, wrap it up. I mean, every year, he just reminds us, wrap it up down here. He's done everything he's going to do. See that? If he's seated, I mean, that doesn't sound like he's working. <laughs> okay, anyway, uh, we'll talk about Noah's Ark and animals and something fluffy, you know, we'll get you all back. We'll get you to your car really feeling good, you know. Um, 2 Corinthians 3.17. Well, let's, no, let's go back to John 14.26. It says that he's the comforter, but he will teach you all things. So what is included in all things? So are there any mysteries? Is it possible that we can know the mysteries? Have the mysteries been revealed? I mean, Paul said they have been. Okay, so the, he, the Holy Spirit will teach us all things. And it's so weird. As I looked at that gentleman right here, you know, in the black, you're, the black uh, the wall here, you're sitting right here. I had a dream about this months ago. And I turned, and as I said that, I said, no, let's go back to John 14. And I looked over at him, and he was in a dream three months ago. And I said that. And I didn't know that I was coming here until like two weeks ago. And you guys are worried about your hair dryer breaking. And what God's going to do tomorrow. And this was already in a dream that I had. And that, and I mean, I, I've never seen you before, but you were, you were sitting right there. It was like deja vu, you know, but better. Isn't that amazing? How did they know to sit there? So the Father and the Holy Spirit reminded me in the dream to go back and say, the Father will send in my name him who shall teach you all things, Amen. okay, and bring all things to your remembrance as well. Not only teach them to you, but then all things will become part of your remembrance to where it's right there available to you anytime, whatsoever I have said unto you all things. Well, John said that the things that Jesus said and did, there wouldn't be enough books on the earth to put into the books. So we have a small portion of everything he did and said, okay? So there are things that we don't have that he said and did, okay? But the Holy Spirit will bring those things to us. And we call it revelation. We call it Revelation, but the Spirit can do anything He wants, even if it wasn't written. Amen. That goes over well. But John said that everything wasn't written. Right. See what I mean? See, all are just, in, you know, we all have gotten into works. We got it all sealed up, you know. I mean, what's, what's going to happen in this generation on this earth? has nothing to do with the next election. I mean, you got to understand that what God's going to do is going to be supernatural. And it's going to not be based on any man. I mean, they've already proven they can steal anything they want and do anything they want. Okay, so God, God will have to do something to his body, for his body, 
that will confirm his covenant with them. And it will be the 300. It'll be the Gideon's army. It won't be the establishment. It'll be those who have been trained and are discerning and know what, how to, to be a good soldier, to always be looking, be discerning. Because you never know what sniper has a green light on you. Well, just look at what's happening. All these ministers, you think they wake up and say, I can't wait till I fall? No. They're sniped. The demons know they take out a leader, they can take out a whole bunch of people. Selah. This is where the band plays, you know, Selah. You know, calmly think about that, you know. 2 Corinthians 3.17, now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Okay, so the Holy Spirit that's inside of you, the one that you're, that you're in sync with, the Lord is that Spirit. So Jesus said, receive the Holy Spirit, and then he breathed on his disciples, symbolizing that the breath of Jesus was the Spirit of God, and it was coming from him. Okay, so the Lord is a Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There's freedom. Okay, so if the Spirit's in your finances, there's going to be freedom. If He's in your body, then He's in your health. So there's going to be freedom there. There's going to be freedom in your body. If He's in your mind, if you let Him in there and you, you submit to the impulses of the Spirit and you don't fulfill the lust of the flesh, then the Spirit's going to be in your mind. It's going to create life within your mind, and it's going to be freedom in your mind. So it's where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. If there's no freedom, guess what? Vacant seat. Okay, so your spirit can prosper. Your spirit can experience eternal life, and yet it cannot go into the other realms. So what happens is, is you don't see these things bleed into, they don't they don't transfer into your psychological realm or your physical realm. And, th and because of that, you don't participate fully in the fullness of being who you are as a person. You just have a spiritual life, but there's discrepancies because it doesn't come in to your bank account or into your body or into your relationships. You sabotage yourself. You work against yourself and you, you watch it happen and you say, why do I do this? Why did I take that that way? And then you have to realize that's because you have trauma in your life. You have hurt in your life. You're just, you're just cowering and you're going back to that place where you were hurt and you were victimized and nobody helped you. And you were hurt and you, were, you felt abandoned. Yeah. I, know, I know what I'm talking about. And because of that, we don't have the tools because the church was supposed to have the tools to help people navigate through this so that Satan couldn't have the upper hand. Okay, so that's why we need church. We need to get together. We need to preach the good news. We need to, we need to minister to people. We need to help people. But it's not just giving them food and money. It's also teaching them how to walk in synchronization with heaven, with, with the Spirit, so that you begin to have God ideas. And you begin to see the favor bleed over into your, your psychological realm and your physical realm. And then it gets into your relationships. And you start to be able to function. Um, you don't walk away and say, man, I wish I would have said this. You always think about what you should have done or said afterwards. I'm telling you, that is a damaged person. I, I know what I'm talking about because I have found a way to say, no, we're not doing that. I said, you do what you want, but we're not doing that. This isn't about you. I've had to become bold because I, I, I'm a steward. You know, I've been given a huge amount of inheritance by the Lord in many different ways. And 
I want to be a person who stays faithful to the very end. If I start to see that I am, I am not able to stay in synchronization with the Spirit, then I need to call it right then and there and not let it go on another day. If I have to take it to the woodshed and one of us only comes back, then that's the way it's going to be. Somebody, somebody is, is, is going to die. In, in other words, somebody is going to get rid of their self-life. We're all supposed to, it says here, we're all supposed to have already encountered the self-life. I already read that. But we haven't. So you have to rectify. You have to, you have to proclaim that you are crucified with Christ, but that you're risen with him. And I know, what, I know what's happened. We, we were lulled into depending upon others, yeah. government and, and church, yeah. church individuals. We were, we were lulled to sleep into thinking that they were supposed to do it for us. And so then when we realized that the bus ain't going where the little sign said it was, you, you're like all of a sudden, like now you feel like you, you, you're hijacked, you know. Now you're thinking, okay, where's my exit point? How many, how, how, how many rounds do I have? How many clips do I have? Do I have to do what Arnold Schwarzenegger did and, and duct tape two clips together? Am I going to have to do a tuck and roll on the way out? Do I have any smoke grenades? You know, in other words, you're like, all of a sudden, you're like, how? Oh, my God. What? It, like, the realization, I'm telling you this because at the point where you realize you're hijacked, when you realize this is going down and nobody wants to say anything, but at what point do we just say, you know what? I'm not waiting for Rambo or Arnie. Arnie. I'm going to take the predator out myself, you know. I'm going I'm to take out the giant. I'm going to take him out myself. And then I'm going to preach the message of freedom. That where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. Period. Okay, so the freedom does not mean debt. It does not mean sickness. <laughs> okay, so like right now, like I'm just going to tell you this because I do this. Like in this room right now, there's literally, like literally, I feel, I, I, I had a vision. I was looking back here just a couple of seconds ago, and I literally saw this beautiful, like, uh, uh, I mean, I, I know what it is, but I don't know if you would, you would understand, but it's like, a, it's something that's in a garden. It's an arboretum. It's a beautiful flower uh, structure that you walk through. And I saw access to the heavenly realm right over here as I, I was just talking. And it's in the room right now. The glory of God is so strong. And the access point in Christ has already been given. The access is through Jesus Christ, and he's already made the way. But what happens is, is in services where you preach the word, at a certain point, it gets to a place where you can almost taste it. You can taste and see, you can sense it, and you need some sort of, of access, a, re, a physical thing that you feel like you've got to do. So that's where people say, well, I hope he lays hands on me. I hope he calls me out. And see, I, that I, have, I have been asked to refrain from doing that by the Lord because maturity has to come to where you say, no, I want the Lord to visit me. I want him to talk to me. I want him to come in and command my house. And um, maybe he can talk to my children. You know, like, like if they're not going to listen to me, maybe they'll, they'll listen to him. Maybe, you know, like, like uh, Jesus showed up in my house. And he said, you know, don't find yourself on the wrong side of me. And he walked off mad. Well, I didn't get on TV for that one. But there are times where the Lord has appeared to me and said, like just recently, and that's changed me. And that's why I have the messages I do tonight and for the next several nights, is that the body of Christ needs to put their foot down because Jesus has put the, his foot down, which means we're going there whether you like it or not. But it would be nice to at least act like you're participating in it and that you kind of know, you know, oh, yeah, I knew that. Yeah, I do that. Yeah, God showed me that a week ago, you know. And you, 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 just, start, you just start walking with him, knowing that he loves you. But here's the thing that has been said to me every day 
for the last two weeks since we've been home from Europe is that he keeps telling me, I trust you. He said, I trust this generation, the body of Christ in this generation, that no other generation has been given what we've been given as far as access and responsibility uh, t- for what he has planned. In other words, we all, of course, in Christ from all the ages, we have the same inheritance. However, the point or the amount that we actually take of it, like, like Pastor Chris, if I tell him there's food coming, he's going to say how much? Because he's thinking, do I need an 18-wheeler or a pickup? Because that's the way he thinks. Okay? But most of you will just show up and like whatever, you know, fits in my car, that's what I'm going to take. It's like, no, Pastor Chris is like, no. I'm... The re- this is the, ma- the mindset of this generation is this mindset of the Spirit is saying it's up here. Don't listen to false teaching any longer that lowballs you down here for any reason. Paul said, if anybody preaches anything other than what I preach to you, he said, let them be accursed. That was the Apostle Paul. And he also said this. He goes, if an angel appears and preaches anything, he said, let that angel be accursed. Okay, so Paul was so confident of what he had received from the Lord that he was able to say that. See, when do we have the same confidence in this generation that the message that we've been given is good enough without adding sugar to it? Without adding anything to it. Forget the bow. Forget the, the, news, the wrapping paper. Just present it and see the freedom start to happen in people's lives. You know, I would expose yourself to the real thing. I would expose yourself to something glowing red hot. Come on now. I'm just telling you. What I saw in the body of Christ at the end of the age, not long from now, I saw where people were walking in this to where people were healed. They were not, they were, they didn't, the people, you, did not even know that people were being healed around you as you walked. There were demons leaving and you didn't, you weren't even thinking about it. But you would show up in people's houses and things would start happening and even the cat didn't like you anymore. But it, it was because the, the fabric and the structure that was there was not right. But you showing up, it, it was collateral. In other words, collateral damage is something that happens not out of the intention, yes. right. but it's still, it was, it, was beyond, it was beyond your scope. But that's what God is saying to the body of Christ right now, is that the message, although it's simple and it confounds the wise, the preaching of the gospel is supposed to do that. It's so silly to the world, but it confounds the wise, but it's very powerful. Yeah. <laughs> it's got to be simple enough that children get it. Yeah. And the children get it. They're waiting for their parents. And they pray for you all the time, you know. No. Okay, so the, 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 the Spirit You've, I've given you the characteristics of the Spirit. I've shown you some things. I'll give you a couple more scriptures because time is really going slow here, and this is great. Okay, but, but these scriptures show who it is that you're walking with and how the mindset of the Spirit, he may, um, he may not be understood completely by the body right now, which is why we don't see the miracles. The miracles are going to be done through you without you <laughs> I've received so many things you think oh you know he must have great faith I've actually received them without praying without fasting without giving without believing I actually had no faith whatsoever for the stuff that comes to me see what I mean y'all looking at me the thing of it is, is that all God wants is to be God. Yeah. <laughs> Ephesians 3, 16 and 17. That this is the prayer that Paul prayed. That he would grant you according to his riches and glory. You know what it says in Greek? Riches. 
Same thing as it does in English. According to his riches of his glory. So everything up there is glorious and glows, but it's all the, the most extravagant material. But he is beyond description. But it says here that he will grant you according or from the riches in glory. He's going to grant to you from that glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. So all that glory, everything about him is being put in inside of your spirit according to the word of God in your inner man. That's where it happens. The access point is that Christ may dwell, that Jesus himself may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love. Okay, so the, 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 the whole process there, he mentions faith, but he also mentions rooted in love, which doesn't, you can't have fear if you're rooted and grounded in love. So there's three things that I, I, I've been instructed to talk about. I've already talked about them in other videos that I recorded today. But one of them is the fear of failure. Okay, so you can't be afraid of failure, especially if you haven't done anything yet. <laughs> and that's the worst. The other one is you can't be afraid of the unknown because if you're afraid of the unknown, it's because you haven't sought, because you can know. And once it becomes knowledge, there's no fear left because you understand it. And what did we say? God's, uh, the Spirit is going to teach us all things. Okay, so th that's available to us, and that's going to happen to you. It's happening right now in your spirit. I mean, right now it's happening. If I want your opinion, I'll give it to you. Okay, so Christ is going to dwell in our hearts by faith, but that is, it's being rooted and grounded through love. So everything works through love. Okay, so we have to go back to the personality of God, that he is love. So he's all these things to you, not just requiring you to be these things to others or to him. He is those things to you as well, and that's why it's hard to understand love is we can't see God as being a loving Heavenly Father. But we don't understand Job. Job didn't understand Job. But see, Job didn't understand what was going on behind the scenes. I don't know that he ever did until he got to heaven. But see, God had so much confidence in him that he bragged. He said, there's no one like Job on the earth. He said, there's no one else on the earth as righteous as Job is. Have you even considered me? He picked a fight. God picked a fight using Job as an example because God trusted Job. And what does it say after every chapter when all those bad things happened and every, at the end of chapter, it, what's it say? Because that's the key to Job that no one teaches. It says in all these things, Job did not sin by blaming God. <laughs> God didn't do all those things. Oh, see what I mean? But he has enough confidence to brag about you, to pick a fight. Did, did you ever think that what you're going through is because God bragged about you? <laughs> so, Paul says... Walk in the Spirit, and you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. So when the Spirit of the Lord comes in, in John 16, verses 13, 14, he says, when he comes, he's going to guide you into all truth. Yeah. All truth. Okay, so that means you're going to know it all. Just don't brag about it, because you'll get kicked out of church. You know. <laughs> you, he's going to guide you. He's going to guide you. He's going to guide you. That means he's going to be giving you instructions on each step, and he's going to guide you in all truth, for he will not speak of himself, but whatever he hears, he shall speak, and he shall show you of things to come. And that's what we're going to need in the days ahead. Amen. We're going to need to know what's coming. We're going to need to know what to do. We're going to have to be ready and able, you know, and we're going to have to be living at a standard where the enemy knows he can't touch us. 
Listen, you've already lived longer than it's possible. Trust me. You have no idea what you've just endured. This, everything that we just went through was intention to wipe you out. And here you are. <laughs> so, Romans 8, 26. Spirit helps us in our weaknesses, and he, he knows how we should pray. So the Holy Spirit is inside of you, knowing our weaknesses, and wants to help us pray out the perfect will of God. This is in Romans 8, 26. It says, The Spirit himself will make intercession with groans that cannot be uttered, and he will pray out the perfect will of God. This is the way it is. That's why I'm here this week. That's why I'm here tonight. It's because I prayed in the Spirit, and the Spirit told me something that I didn't even know. That He told me, hit the road. He told me to do this. He told me to preach these messages on being harmonized and walking in the Spirit in the supernatural in the days ahead. To navigate. He ta he's teaching us. The Spirit is making a cry to the whole body of Christ to let it go. The things of the past and the ways of the past and how it used to work. And listen to the Spirit. I'm just looking for that one widow. I'm just looking for that widow. Because that's that that was the key. The prophet didn't need a ministry or a church or an invite. He just needed a widow. <laughs> it wasn't the loaded person. It was a widow. Come on now. We can do this. Y'all are looking so good anyway. I mean, you, you can see the glory of God on you. And um, this, this has to happen anyway, but I'm not going to let it ratchet up to where it becomes ne necessary for us to make a decision. I'm calling all of us, we've already made that decision. We've already had that quality in, our, in our, our lives of the decisions we've made. Let's go ahead and rise above and not wait for leadership. Let's just be leadership. Let's just call the things that are not as though they were. Let's start talking. And, and you know, I, I think about the voices that are speaking in your life. And there's so many of them that need to, to shut up. You need to tell them to shut up. You need, you, need to, you, need, you need to not let your circumstances be talking so loudly that you can't hear God. You've you got to silence these these voices god if he is in control of your life which he is if you give it to him then he's in control of your finances he's in control of your health he's in control of every part of your life which means that he's either going to tell you to stay or to go he's going to tell you to do something but it's not going to be compromising He's going to tell you to cut and run, or he's going to tell you to go full force and turn your crazy relatives into somebody that you can actually live with. In other words, either God's going to tell you, listen, cut and run, or, or stay and roll your eyes at the devil and laugh at him. you got to decide, and you've, if you're going to stay, you better have a sword in your hand. You better have a sword and you better have a, a, some sort of tool to build. I mean, that's what Nehemiah did. Sword in one hand and a trial in the other. And I'm not talking about the trials you're going through. I'm talking about something that has to do with masonry. I'm not talking about the masons either. So, <laughs> Come on now. All these things in the Bible I'm talking about are prophetic for today. Okay, so like right now, there was a divine explosion. I just heard a boom and an explosion, a bright light 
just exploded. I just, I just felt the, the, the stuff is happening in the spirit. I, God, I don't know what the angels are doing, but there's war going on in the heavenlies right now. There, there's, there's, literally, there's literally a call for people to stand up and operate in their spiritual gifts and in their callings. And in their, you're chosen. You're chosen. Come on now. Everybody, everybody stand up. Come on. Father, Father, in the name of Jesus, we stand. We stand for you. Lord, we stand for you. Lord, we call. We call for the repentance of this nation. We would call for the repentance of the church. Lord, to turn from our ways, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. We take, we take hold of that which you've taken a hold of for us. You're well able to keep that which we've committed until that day. Father, all, everyone in here, we want the best that you have. We, we accept the best, Lord. Lord, we pray for the fivefold ministers. We pray for all the churches and all the ministries. Lord, that you would have your way. Just, Lord God, do your cleansing fire. Have your cleansing fire come through and prepare the bride, the cleansing, the repentance, the fear of the Lord, the holiness, the highway of holiness that we're all called to walk on, the fear of the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the blood of Jesus and for the name of Jesus and for the gift of repentance that you've granted us the ability to repent. Hallelujah, that you caused us to repent by revealing your goodness to us. We are led in repentance. Father, we thank you that this day, this night here, we, we stand firm in what we know. And we know, Lord, that you're taking us into that place where there is no defeat. There's no lack. There's no sickness. There's no controversy any longer, Lord, because we are fully convinced. Holy Spirit, right now, minister, 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 Holy Spirit, right now, overpower, overwhelm us with, with the love of God. Overwhelm us with the revelation of who Jesus is. Oh, Lord, we turn from our own thinking. We repent. We repent right now, Lord, of our own thinking and and our, you know, our thoughts are not your thoughts, and your ways are not your ways. And Lord, we turn, we turn right now. We acknowledge that we have not done what you've asked us to do. And Lord, we want to be the bride that you have always planned for us to be. Ha, 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 ha. Oh, the Spirit's just saying, drink of me. Drink deeply of me. Be full of joy. Be full of joy. Drink of me right now as I pour out. I pour out on my body. Right now, the Holy Spirit is pouring out on all of us. Right now. Right now. He's pouring out on us. Just receive. We repent. We submit to the fear of the Lord. We submit and we walk on the highway of holiness. We stand separate from the world. Oh, Holy Spirit, fill us. Oh, we forgive. We love, we forgive. We repent. We all turn from our own ways. No se cole mini drasi no kama, si si cole bere drasi no hanfandi, sensi kala bere drasi tosi kara metra, aso cole bere drasi toske sia, santo le meni kama na, ya so kiri drasi toske, sen remika na moni, ale ole ole vasi noke, haye para bere drasi kara dia drasi to, ya, ya I'm taking you higher, I'm flying you higher, you're doing better than you think you're doing. Take my hand. Take my hand. We're going up. We're going up higher. We're going to walk where the angels walk. The, the Lord's just saying it has begun. It has begun. Rivers. Rivers. Rivers of living water are flowing out from us to the world, and repentance shall come. Yes. 
The building up of the body shall come. Deliverance shall come. Oh, helami hasu no kene de atrashata. Ajito, alito elama kirena sinota. Heshivara vera trasha kolavana dire shotoski shata. Since again, I'm in Dresden, Oskini Mala. Yes, Fadi Kolavera Drasheta. Yes, yes, yes. The discipline of the Lord shall be complete. And you shall learn and you shall submit. And then you'll be given more liberty. You'll be given more freedom to walk because you have submitted. You have submitted to the discipline of the Lord and the yoke of the Lord. Songs of deliverance are being sung over you at night. There's a fire, a wall of fire around you, a wall of holiness that is cleansing you, that is helping you to walk in what I have for you. Yeah. Yeah, you're no longer going to be wondering or guessing. It's going to be, you're going to wake up and know what I'm saying to you, says the Lord. You're going to know. You're going to know that you're doing just fine. Because you're mine. Hello, hello, Vikina. She's a very very trashiotoske. Yeah, step by step. Just step by step. Don't worry about the whole path. Just be focused on what I'm telling you to do next. One step at a time. Enjoy the journey. You shall see you at the end of your faith. In the land of the living. Ha ha ha. Yeah, ha ha ha. Oh yeah. It's coming. It's coming. Ha ha ha. Yeah. Whoa, he kinda mean or shana. Ya so dire terikarita. Ha ha ha. Yeah, I'm gonna renew. I'm gonna renew you. I'm gonna renew. I'm gonna renew you and renew your vows to me. You're married to me. And that's the way it's going to be, don't you see? So be free. La bikiri tosi lama hisinta. Praise God. You're going to prophesy to your world. Yes. That's what the Spirit keeps saying. Prophesy to your world. you got to speak the truth. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Call upon the angel armies to break the power of war. To break the power of war. Angel armies to intervene. Angel armies to define the borders. Angel armies to bring forth the righteous and the just balances. That everything that has to do with the church shall be done. We agree with it. Everything that has to do with Israel will be done according to the boundaries set by Jesus and the Father. The boundaries that are set for the church of the Lord Jesus Christ and the boundaries are set for Israel it shall be established on this earth as it is in heaven we call for angel armies to intervene we break the power of war and murder and hatred and racism we break racism we break the power of hatred by the authority of Jesus Christ and by the blood of Jesus we bind 
every lying devil, every hate, hating devil, every murderous spirit. Spirits of divination, we break your power. Of satanic rule, in Jesus' name, we break your power. I break poverty over the church, in Jesus' name. I break, I break disease and sickness. I break the power of that over the body of Christ right now. I break dissension. I break false doctrine. I break the power of lying and deceiving and, and any kind of arguments that they're brought into submission to Christ in Jesus' name, that we love one another as Christ loved the church. So don't get a bala bit of trash at all, ski shit up, bala lit trash at all. Sicori trash at all. Sicori trash at all, ski himala, ishito, she got a dress at all, ski shit out of a trash at all. A bala bit of trash at all, she got a dress at all, ski shit on Dana Manadresa. Oh, the Shatoria Caravara to Shorada. Hallelujah. I just heard the Lord say, Let me pray through you. So it's like if you're um, in an army and um, you might be like a private and then, I don't know all the terms, but then like a general comes in. So all of a sudden that general, it's like he pulls rank because he's got a higher rank. So the Lord is going to pull rank on your enemies. And we're going to pray. What we're going to do is we're going to let the Holy Spirit pray through us. Okay, but it's not going to be in our own strength. He's going he's gonna to strengthen you to pray out what he needs to pray out. So we're just going to... Um, we're going to humble ourselves. Lord, we just, just tell the Lord, Lord, I humble myself under your mighty hand. And I, Holy Spirit, I let you pray out what you need to pray out through me right now for my family, for this region, for my nation, and for the world. And we yield to you now. The creator of the universe is going to pray out the mysteries right now. Shtamba Lakuto, just yield to the Holy Spirit. Basan. Trobo Stebe Daba Stabato, Brobo Stebe Cabasto, Itave Istando Ro, Ita, he's praying through you into your situation. Mate Lemo Ramasa Tave, Baraburo Borrababa Sambande, Borrama Stambando Corre, we yield to you, Lord, we yield to you, Holy Spirit. Brosanando remandeke, baravara vuta vlandosto. Bare e, it's not by might or power, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord. Bas lovo rambaste, bavoto korama stambande, domboro bababa stavato, bate kola vanosto, moto rambas tebete. Balavondo are ere, out of your belly flows rivers. Out of your belly flows rivers of living water. Mande la mondo ramasto. Bande palabor rabaha ha ha. Ha 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 ha ha. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Orama Samandeshe. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hall Just lift your hands and thank the Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the victory. We thank you, Lord, for the victory. From victory to victory to victory. From victory to victory to victory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We thank you for your peace. We speak peace. We speak peace. We thank you that you are the Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just raise your hands and thank the Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Lift up your voice. Tell him you love him. Thank you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, let's keep praying. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the fire. Our God is a consuming fire. Thank you, Lord, that our enemies have been defeated in Jesus' name. Come on, declare that over your family right now. Our God is a consuming fire. And he consumes anything that is in his way. So, Lord, we pray that you would burn it up in Jesus' name. Burn it up in Jesus' name. Anything in our life that is not of you, burn it up in Jesus' name. Come on, pray for the holy fire right now. Lord, touch us. Baptize us with the holy fire right now, Lord. Burn up anything in our lives that's not of you, Lord. Lord, we've been asleep in the light, Lord. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's pray. Come on, let's go a little further. Come on, let's pray in the Spirit. Rebe Sanda Maraba Soto Moreke Se Rebe Bebe 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 Se Kerianda Rabaso Rimba Masa Kareke Se Te Shurana Namasai. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just keep laughing because I see the enemies of God shaking right now. Because, because God is the victorious one. Woo! Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And Father, we pray right now, Lord, for our lost loved ones right now that are away from you. Lord, we know that it's harvest time. So, Father, we pray for the prodigals, sons and daughters, Lord, those that have been away from you. Lord, I pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus that you would bring them home in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we break drug addiction right now in Jesus' name. Loose them and let them go in Jesus' name. Lord, we break off depression. Brain fog, we break it in Jesus' name. Your blood is enough, Lord. You are calling us, Lord, to the marketplace, to our workplace, to win the loss, to bring them in, Lord. You are calling us to put our hands to the plow and not look back. Lord, I thank you for this army of people, Lord. And thank you, warrior notes, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for fresh water and fresh bread from heaven. Thank you, Lord. I don't know about you, but I feel the fire of God. And if you, if you don't feel that, I'm sorry, something's wrong. Well, listen, we can go all night because I've been in meetings like this where you just keep going. I want to tell you, you got to take this, right, this word. This is a word from heaven, right? Like I said, fresh bread, fresh water. You got to take that and apply it to your family and apply it to everywhere you go. Amen? You guys are soldiers of the Lord, and he's calling you to your workplace, to your family. And I want to tell you, we're living in a special time right now where the harvest is like the fruit is just sitting there waiting to be picked. I'm telling you, we've, we can do this. Amen. You've heard Kevin and Kathy say this. We're going to do this together. We are doing this together, but we are going to take the land. I want to tell you a quick little story. I'm telling you, and you probably noticed this as well. 
The other day I went to, to eat with my family, and I saw these ladies. There were these three ladies, and they were handing out tracks, and they were not the good tracks. They were a different religion. And I said to myself, when I come out of this place, I'm going to witness to them. And I wanted the devil to hear it. Well, they came inside, and I said, perfect. That's perfect. And I began to eat. I got done eating, and I told my family, I said, I'm going to go talk to those ladies right now. I went over there. They were sitting right there. I went over there. I'm not talking about myself. I'm talking about God. And this is what you can do as well. I went over there. I pulled a chair up. I sat down. And I said, I just want to tell you that Jesus Christ has set me free. And he can set you free as well. This lady to my right started choking. I knew it was a devil. I looked at her and I said, you don't want to get all choked up about it. I looked right at that demon. And they could not believe the boldness. But I'm telling you. That's what God is calling us to right now. He is calling us to take the land. He is calling us for, to dominion, right? Everywhere we set our foot, we take it for Jesus Christ. He's looking for that boldness, all right? Now, this is not a, always a plug, but we do have some holy fire. And I want to tell you, this book, if you're ready to go to the next level, this book will help you. This book has, I mean, listen, I've been saved for a while, but this book has challenged me so much. Every time I read a couple chapters, I have to, like, repent and pray, Lord, I've been thinking. So I just want to tell you, we have a couple copies if you want it. Um, but listen, go in the love of God, and it's very simple. Love God and love people. Amen. That's all God's calling us to do. All right. God bless you.